we talked about seven people which we love, still love dearly. But we have not spoken about the people we serve. Every day, handful, a dozen, a hundred, a thousand, more are killed from them. So while we are remembering our dear brothers and sisters who left this world for a mission they believe that they wanted to accomplish, they left us behind to accomplish the mission. This is one thing. The second thing is whom we serve. Never lose the focus on the people that we serve because they are our employers. They are the people who are paying our salary while we are living here in UK in offices, air conditioned, desks, safety, prosperity. They live the life that we cannot live. They eat the food that we cannot eat, drink the water that we cannot drink, dress the clothes that we cannot dress, and think about things that we we'll never think about. Their dreams could be a football, or could be a lollipop, or could be a dish of food, rice. But our dreams are different. And those are the people who are leading us by their wisdom, their patience and their strength is magnanimous. And no one of us in this room can stand with the patience, the suffering, the strength that they have. They are more powerful than us. And any and each one of us, no matter what we say, we have to rise to their standard. We have to stand up to the quality of their giving of sacrifices to humanity. The widows, the orphans, the homeless, the naked, the raped, the displaced, the refugees. Those are the people we need to remember with our brothers and sisters on that day. It should not be, should not, should not, should not be only one day. It should be a mission that we need to accomplish. And the message that we deliver and the project that we give to save humanity. We should be very proud of becoming humanitarian work. We also should celebrate the success of one of our sisters in the most dangerous no-go zone, Rosny, Natasha, who started with Islamic Relief in 1999 for about seven or eight years, where no man can work, but she did, workaholic. Natasha was the one behind the success story of Islamic relief in Chechnya. Somebody you have to be very proud of. When you talk about the power of the woman in the humanitarian field, I mentioned Natasha as well as others. So today is we are recharging our hearts to rise to the standards. We are rethinking about our life to deliver what we have for humanity following their footsteps. While we're shaping our message, what? To respond to the message coming to us from Afghanistan, from Chechnya, from Bosnia, from Myanmar. But those people are being very well looked after themselves by themselves. So we need to be amongst them. We need to be with them, not to talk about them. We need to look at, it's dangerous to go to these places, but this is my job. It could be a no-go area, but this is my life. Do I claim that I'm a humanitarian? Yes, I do. Go, stand, fight for them, defend them, respond to their causes, and the life and death is in the hand of the Creator. 
Nobody can take your life from you unless he permits that. So when we look at it, humanitarian work is not a job. It's not a salary. It's not a per diem. It's not a five to nine or nine to five. It's not a policy. It's a life mission. I would like to be a humanitarian worker. He or she has to understand that they give their life to save the lives of others. This is how we started 31 years ago. With no desks, no offices, no telephones, no, what do you call it? Uh, you were with us, huh? <laughs> Before you were born. Huh? Uh, no faxes, no telex machine, <laughs> typewriter, you know typewriter? <laughs> Typing, do 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 do. No Somali camel meat. Because <laughs> I got a lot of Somali invasion. <laughs> no of the north. There were no internet as well. Huh? No internet. Oh, I can't say internet uh, 30 years ago. Yeah, I, nothing. I said no desks, no seats, no chair to sit on, no cabin. None of the none. Now you have some of the greatest opportunity to take the Islamic leaf forward to a different level. You have, we have, to be very proud of creating humanitarian movement in the West. But this is not enough. Because the humanitarian movement is based on emotional reaction. What we need is to create social movement. It's based on cementing the social infrastructure of every society that we are working at. It's not handing out handout of food and clothes and water. It's cementing and building the social infrastructure of the society that we claim that we are set. So today is to remember to charge my heart. I know him because he's a good friend of mine. A very handsome man. He's one year old. Because we used to travel together to area where nobody can go. He was a champion. Amen. He was the leader. Amen. He was a great man. Amen. That's why Allah has chosen him. He did not choose him. He did not choose somebody like that. Be careful when you go to the field. The field is where is the wealth of knowledge. But with the wealth of life, the wealth for the future. The field is where we have the real teaching, the real wisdom. The people who make us celebrity, and the people who make us famous, and the people who lead us to raise all this money, because we talk about their agony. Can we live their agony? Just one day. Remember Jangir and uh, somebody else and Habib from UK wanted to stay one day in Rakuba, in Darfur, to live like the displaced people in Darfur. We couldn't be able to take it for more than one day. One day in Rakuba, and those people stay forever in Rakuba. I remember Adil and Hassan were actually in the same place. And they couldn't be able to sleep at night in Islamic sleep guest house. You know why? Because everything was creeping at night. You know? Going up and down, up and down, up and down. And they were fighting. Adil was telling me. All the things was flying underneath the blanket and the pillows and the, something it was for the fight between some of the, these jets <laughs> in the room. And beep! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and when we went to Warab in South Sudan, you have to climb uh, 
something to get in the what halat I finish now. <laughs> you go to the gotiya, which is made out of mud, and you can at that night, at, at, at night actually see something is going up on the roof. When you look at the roof, you find see <coughs> some lights coming. Oh, alhamdulillah, lights are there. It's actually there's no roof. When you have a shower in South Sudan, you look at the star. The star is watching over you. There's no roof, no ceiling, nothing. So today, we, I thank you, all of you, alhamdulillah, for, the, for remembering. We are not remembering a story. We are living the story, we are motivated by them, would love to live their life. Thank you.